Hi, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, thanks all for showing up. We're going to be talking about um, CCMs today, how you would run one, uh, the features of a CCM, and then how you'd create your own as well as why you would want to. Um, but first of all, about me. I am a engineer at Containership, and what I do is I write software for provisioning Kubernetes clusters on multiple providers, um, as well as the software that runs on those clusters once they're running. Um, because of this, I have had to play with cloud controller managers for four of the providers that we support, as well as I ended up writing my own for Packet since when we were going to integrate with them, they didn't have one. Um, from doing this, I've really had to dig into the code and learn all about them. Um, so what exactly is a CCM? Um, CCMs were first introduced in Kubernetes in version 1.6, and it runs a daemon that embeds cloud-specific control loops. Um, this was pulled into its own binary to allow cloud providers to develop and release at a different pace than the Kubernetes project. Instead of having to do the quarterly releases with Kubernetes, they could release faster. Um, this really allows the cloud agnostic tooling, which is Kubernetes, to deeply integrate with your cloud provider of choice and giving you that feature set of the cloud provider while still being cloud agnostic. Um, this also allows you to have some of your hardware properties be declarative manifests. Um, and this can be an advantage for cost saving, reproducibility, um, and those advantages. One such thing is if you have your cloud running in a dev environment, a production environment, you know that you're going to have the same environment across those two clusters um, for node labels, load balancers, and those other feature sets that we'll get into. Um, I think, first of all, it's important to know how to run one and what happens when you do run one. Um, so there's two different types of CCMs. Um, there's entry and out of tree. And if it's entry, that means that the code is actually in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, and it is built as part of the binary when you deploy your Kubernetes cluster. If it's out of tree, it is not in the Kubernetes repo, and it's in a separate repo. An example of this would be Digital Ocean as well as Oracle, um, and there's some others as well. Um, when you run a in-tree provider, one way you can run it is by specifying that cloud provider flag on your kubelet. Um, and if it is out of tree, you can specify it in a deployment or daemon set by running that image and pulling in the CCM, with, again, with the cloud provider flag. Now, if you run out of tree, you're still going to have to specify that cloud provider flag on your kubelet and specify it to an external. This is because by doing that on your kubelet, it sets all of your nodes to have this taint, which says that um, that node is not schedulable until the CCM initializes your node, um, as well as it just lets your CCM know that it needs to do something with this node. Also, I'm sorry this off. I hear it scratching. Oh no. Oh boy. I'm sorry guys. Sorry about that. Hopefully that's better. Um, <laughs> so now what are the features of the CCM? Like when you're running it, what's it give you? Why would you go through this extra effort to run these binaries on your cluster? Um, so the main features are going to be uh, Kubernetes node management, load balancer management, routing management, and if you're running an out of tree provider, it really gives you this full set of tools and controllers that you can loop into and extend in whatever you, way you want since it's giving you interfaces to work with. Um, so Kubernetes node management that is responsible for initializing your node, which is when I was talking about that taint, um, this is what registers that that taint is there, and then how to um, go from there, that it needs to do something, it can't just ignore this node. Um, 
And first of all, what it's going to do is it's going to set a provider ID on it, which maps that Kubernetes node to the node that is in your provider and making those two things one. Um, it also adds a zone and region label for identifying that node for management purposes, um, writing the node's network address and host name to the status object so that you have all the information about your node through kubectl by just looking at your nodes. Um, as well as it gives you node rec reconciliation. So when you do kubectl get nodes, or if you're looking through the API, you know those nodes that are being returned to you actually exist. Um, so this is what the node controller kind of looks like in a generic way. Um, so the node controller, if you're not familiar with the uh, Go frameworks, has a controller which has a sync handler. And all that sync handler is doing is it's taking the state that your cluster is in and taking it and comparing it to a desired state. Um, so when it gets into the sync handler, it is going to check that it has that cloud taint and has not been processed. Um, and then it's going to go and look at your CCM and get that instance by the node instance that has been registered in Kubernetes. It's going to then assign a provider ID to the spec object of your node so that it knows how to map it and get more information about it in the future and make sure that it's staying up to date. Um, it then goes and looks for the instance type and adds label to your node. So you can identify your nodes and know that this is a, plus a node with two CPU or however these nodes are labeled in your provider. It's going to give you that same information as if you were looking at it through the DigitalOcean dashboard, the AWS dashboard, et cetera. Um, as well as it's going to give you the labels with um, the zone failure domain as well as the zone region. Um, not all providers have these concepts, uh, so they're not super well mapped right now, but that is something that is also being looked at and worked on. But it's information that you can fill out and have on your node in a consistent way with a consistent key under your labels. Um, after it goes through all those checks, it will remove the taint. Um, and then I have update node on there because it does the same thing on any node update. It's going to go through that loop. However, it'll get to that check cloud taint, and since it's been removed and it's been processed and initialized, it's just not going to do anything. Um, and so when I say node reconciliation, what it does is it sets off the separate Go routine that is another node controller looking at the cloud instances and pulling from your cloud provider and making sure the node's provider ID that has been set on it is still existing in your provider. And if it no longer exists, it's going to remove that from your node, from your cluster. And that's why when I say when you get your nodes from kubectl and you see them, you know they all exist because otherwise it would have been removed. So it just keeps the state of your cluster up to date with the state of the world. And you know this is like the true state. Um, another really powerful feature that the CCM is going to give you is load balancer management. And I think it's um, probably the most powerful feature of the CCM. And what it does is when you do a kubectl create service LB, it's going to go and create a load balancer on your provider if the CCM supports that. Um, so what's really cool about that is if you're developers, whoever has access to your provider goes on there and deletes your load balancer because they're like, hey, this isn't being used. The CCM is going to see that and it's just going to bring it right back up. You're not going to experience like a day of downtime of why isn't this server working. It's just it's going to come back up in the same state, running on the same ports. Um, and another really cool thing about that is depending on your provider, unfortunately, this isn't standardized. Um, but you can add annotations to your uh, service, and you get all these special features. You get, um, for AWS, you can add which type of traffic you're routing to that load balancer. You can get HTTP, HTTPS, TCP. And then if you're running that HTTPS, you can map that to a cert in your provider, and it automatically is going to be added to your load balancer. It's not an extra step. So you, when you're committing this into your GitHub, your GitLab, whatever, however you manage your code, you go to deploy, it's going to be the same thing every time you have that repeatability. 
Um, and even across cloud providers, if you just have a service that you know needs a load balancer, whether you're launching on DigitalOcean, AWS, and you're moving your infrastructure, you're going to have that load balancer come up, and you're still going to be able to interact with it in the same way. Um, another feature that the CCM gives you is route management. Um, this is required for GCE, and the only provider I know that's using it is GCE, and that allows pod networking between your nodes. I was talking to some people from Cloud Provider earlier, and it seems that this was pretty much like GCE was the first um, provider using the CCM, so it's just one of those features that they needed and they put in there and no one else has really used from my understanding. Um, but some pain points with this. Documentation is sporadic. Because it is across providers, it's hard to know exactly where to look for each individual piece that is configurable. Um, they're definitely doing a lot of work on this. There's a PR out for getting set up with a CCM right now to revamp the documentation for that so it is more easily understood. However, it's not there right now. And when I was trying to figure it out, it was pretty much trial and error launch a cluster with this and like, did it work? Okay, nope, tear that one down, try again, see if I can get this on the first shot. Um, um, another thing, I launched a GCP cluster with a CCM and just by chance I ended up having my node pools um, across multiple zones and all of a sudden my traffic wasn't working, they weren't talking to each other, I couldn't figure out why. And um, after digging into code for about an hour or so, I realized there's like this multi-zone flag that I need to set and mount this configuration into the pod and set that to true and just kind of had to dig through the code to find that out. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different config values and this is the only place you see them. It's not under a repo or any documentation. Um, I think with the new changes that are being done to CCM, this is really gonna improve though, so you're gonna have a much better user experience. Um, some other pain points I've had is this was this project was um, originally something that you would set on each piece of your Kubernetes cluster, so they came with cloud or with volume management, which isn't really the case anymore. However, if you run it through the kubelet for a provider such as AWS, you get that volume management, but then when you run it as a deployment or a daemon set, you don't get the volume management, and until recently, AWS didn't have a CSI, so you didn't really have the option of how you wanted to run this binary on your cluster. Um, and that could be kind of frustrating to figure out as to why what you were expecting to happen wasn't happening. Um, as well as I took a screenshot of this, this is the documentation I looked at, and it's like, these flags will vary for every cloud provider. That was it. There, you, you didn't go in the cloud provider and be like, hey, this is how you should set them, or this is what they'll do. It was just kind of like, oh, have fun. So <laughs> that was a good time. Um, so as I was saying, uh, the CCM used to be part of API, Cube Controller, and the Kubelet, and it was a cloud provider flag you had to set on all three parts of your infrastructure for it to work properly. Um, that has since been pulled into its own module. Um, it's still in, for the entry provider, it's still in core, as well as there's still like a few pieces of code that is looking for if providers set to GCE have this special logic, um, but it, it is getting all pulled out. Um, the plan right now is for them to each have their own repo under Kubernetes slash cloud provider dash the provider name. Um, some providers have it in their own repo, so like DigitalOcean has it in, under their own DigitalOcean GitHub. Um, and that's kind of based on tooling and how they are interacting with the community and just other options. But you can read more about where they're planning on going and their caps. Um, but yeah, like I said, the documentation is definitely improving this. So there's PRs up and um, yeah, so that's pretty cool to see. So creating your own. Um, creating your own is actually pretty simple, um, mainly because there's already examples out there that are really well documented as well as these interfaces are very well split apart as to what each piece is doing that makes it really easy to understand 
Um, and then you can implement which features you want. As I talked about, there's different features within that CCM and you don't have to implement them all for it to be a CCM. Uh, if you don't have load balancing, you don't add that. You can just add like the label management type things. Um, and why would you want to create your own? Um, it gives you so much power to have repeatable infrastructure that you have things that you can depend on in it. So even if you're running um, on-prem, you can implement the label management, label management to point to a certain rack, a certain server, so you just know by looking at this node where to go and which server you're actually talking to. Um, as long as you have an API to give you information, you can write a CCM and have better, re more repeatable infrastructure. Um, so to do that, you're, in your main file, you're gonna include the core CCM um, code to run, and you're gonna import your API with all the functions that you have implemented for the interface. Um, and then to run the CCM, you do that app.run, which is the CCM code that you've imported, and you can add other options as well. Um, if you want to look at examples of this, you can look at the packet CCM or the digital ocean CCM are the ones I'm most familiar with, but there's others out there as well. So this is an interface that you would implement in each of these pieces. So like the load balancer, you would return another interface that it implements um, for it to be a load balancer and then a Boolean value. So if you don't want to implement that interface, you just return false. If you want to implement it, you return true with it and the interface that you are implementing. Um, so to initialize your provider, you are going to want an init block in that main source code that you're importing with the underscore. Uh, and that registers your cloud provider with your provider name so it knows about it, and you're gonna return that cloud provider interface that you have implemented um, with the information about the other interfaces that you have decided to implement. Um, and then the, how you are going to manage and keep track of the information that you need to. Um, and if, you can look at the slides, I've posted them and linked to them in my talk, and they have links out to the, uh, some example CCMs. Um, so an interface within that that you can implement is the zones interface to have that label data on your nodes. Um, you can use it for syncing metadata. Uh, it's synced by the node controller, and um, it just Again, it adds consistency, so like an example is like the failure domain for the region that would then be on every node that's running the CCM and you can always count on that label to be there for your node management. Um, to implement the zone interface, it's just three functions um, and it's gonna be the get zone, get zone by provider ID and get zone by node name. Um, and again, I've linked out to like the specific file for the packet CCM where I implemented this. Um, and yeah, so you're gonna just use your provider's API to get that information. Um, in this case, I actually just ended up using a little metadata server to get metadata off the machine and then write it and return it as the zone. So I didn't even really interact with the packet API for some of this. Um, but you uh, then implement like getting that device ID from the provider ID, so you have to know how to map those two together. So whether you have that as the node name that people provide for your provider or the um, ID just being able to map those two together. I know in some cases people will let you provide the private IP and how you would talk to the cluster um, for those mapping purposes. It doesn't have to be the node name, it's just kind of um, what you specify and then you have to document what's allowed. Otherwise, the CCM won't know what device on the provider it's talking to. Um, and then you would get the zone by the node name as another option instead of the provider ID um, and returning that information as well. Um, and again, this just returns that struct that has the region or the failure device and um, 
maps that and adds it to the label that will be put on the node. Um, yeah, so that's uh, CCMNU. Like, what are you going to do after this? You can go and build your own open source CCM for people to use if that's a bare metal solution, something for behind um, the cloud if you can't talk to the internet. Just being able to have that power to have those repeatable steps for your clusters. Um, but the SIG is definitely looking for help with docs. Um, and I have linked to the SIG cloud provider that manages all of this, um, as well as uh, entry cloud provider. So you can take a look at what is in core Kubernetes right now, but they are being actively moved out. Um, one interesting thing that I was kind of thinking about is something you could do is um, for ensuring load balancers, you can literally take that block and do whatever you want. I thought it'd be kind of interesting to have it spin up a service that's an Nginx load balancer, and you don't even need a physical load balancer then, and just, you know, you can play with like different ideas. You don't necessarily have to be doing something on a cloud provider. Um, you can just make it work for you. So, questions? Yeah. I'm supposed to give you a mic. Yeah. Uh, why would you want to run your CCM if it's out of tree as a deployment versus a daemon set? Like, what are the benefits and drawbacks? Um, so with the deployment, you can specify just running one replica. Um, the reason I put that difference is I know in DigitalOcean's examples, they have it as a deployment. Um, however, the documentation has it as a daemon set that runs on all the masters. Um, doing like a leader election format, so you get those provided benefits from Kubernetes. Um, so if you're running HA, you can have your CCM HA as well. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Is there a way to? Uh, I Sorry, you got to talk in the mic. <laughs> Is there a way to add uh, like arbitrary data to the kubelet's uh, information when it's registering as a node? So if I wanted to know the exact hardware type and things like that to carry that into the controller manager for how we make decisions on what region it is or what type of daemon sets would automatically get created for that type of node, um, um, is, there, is there some mechanism for like extra key values to be provided with the kubelet registration? In the kubelet, you can specify whatever labels you want. Um, that is a kubelet feature um, within the CCM. If you wanted to implement uh, certain things for your nodes, you would have to do that under like the framework of instance type and yeah. return that information there. Okay. Uh, but it wouldn't be done in the kubelet necessarily, except for there's a labels flag in the kubelet if you just want to put everything there as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Other questions? Can you pass this back? To yeah. Thank you. Yeah, is there a way to scale up, scale down the nodes using uh, CCM APIs? Um, there is not currently, but if you wrote your own CCM, you could probably implement that. You would put in the node controller and um, have it interact that way. But you would have to know how to talk to the API and how to um, create and edit nodes. So it wouldn't be like a great place for it, but if you wanted to do it, you could. I'd look at more so at some kind of autoscaler. But, um, yep, uh, do you mind passing the mic over there? So likewise, I didn't see any uh, provision in the interface for uh, configuring uh, network objects or anything like that besides the load balancers themselves. So I'm thinking in Amazon, you know, it would be um, uh, awesome if we could have uh, Kubernetes itself manage things like the subnets in which it would be instantiating those instances, or even the VPC itself, and if, if you're talking about something in a separate control plane. Um, it, is there any um, provision for that, or is that sort of just down, you, if you're going to do that, you'd have to do it as a as something that isn't part of the generic uh, cloud provider. Yeah, that wouldn't be part of the generic um, creating of the load balancer. But AWS by far has the most annotations that you can add to your services to get custom functionality. So depending what you're looking for, you might be able to accomplish it with that. Um, 
but yeah, you might want to write your own thing or there might be some other project for that, but I haven't done anything with it. Yeah. Uh, how does this fit or not fit with uh, cluster API or some of the other sort of solutions that are you know, related to working with the cloud uh, APIs? Um, well, Cluster API is purely for provisioning on any provider, where this is more like that second step of how you're going to interact with that cluster once it's up. Um, having that, those label informations and the load balancers, um, as far as I know, Cluster API is only touching creating the instances. Um, it wouldn't be the load balancers. And then there's separate project CSI, which also falls under cloud providers for creating and managing volume data. Um, and I think that is all separate from the cluster API. What's the current situation with um, issues with the scheduler and volumes binding? Because last time I tried to switch to the sort of uh, external cloud controller manager, mm -hmm. there were issues with volume binding that we had to go back to the built-in one. I'm guessing you're using AWS. Uh, OpenStack, actually. OpenStack, okay. Um, I haven't worked with OpenStack, but with AWS, um, when you run it through the kubelet, there's this extra control loops that happen in the kube controller manager that gets set, and that does all the volume controlling um, as well as the volume label controller. And when you run it externally through the cloud controller manager, it doesn't run those binaries. So the kube controller manager sees that you're not running a cloud provider and it doesn't do anything with the volume management and then um, when you run on the cloud controller it doesn't have the same controllers to run. Um, so that's when the CSI comes into play. So OpenStack would need a CSI for it to work. Um, and that's part of the um, thrashing that's kind of going on between taking those entry providers out of tree. Thanks. Any other questions? No? Okay, see y'all at the Space Needle. Mm -hmm.